Hello, first graders, and welcome to your read aloud for today. So we are going to be reading a book called Life in a Tundra, Biomes Alive. And so over here on this page, we have our table of contents. So what we're going to be learning in this book is what the tundra biome is, the climate in a tundra, the plants that are in a tundra, the animals that live in a tundra, and it looks like the last thing we'll learn about is the Baffin Coastal Tundra, which I don't know much about, so I'm really excited to learn with you. So let's get started. The Tundra Biome. Earth's chilliest biome is the tundra. Extreme cold prevents a lot of plant growth. So as you can see in this picture, there's some plants over here, but there's really not too many trees or bushes or grass because it is so cold and there's so much snow. The tundra is often a desert of ice with no trees, just like I had mentioned. It has a layer of frozen ground called permafrost, and this never melts. So look at this picture. So this is when the weather's a little nicer in a tundra, and you can see some dirt and some grass, but there's still going to be this layer of permafrost that never melts. That's really cool. Tundras exist in the Arctic and the Antarctic. These areas receive little sunlight sometimes. And some of the winter days have no sunlight at all. So that means it is dark and it looks like night for the entire day. The Arctic is up here, and this is in the top half of our globe. So the Arctic is all the way north towards the North Pole, and in these areas highlighted in purple. And the Antarctic tundra is all the way at the bottom in the South Pole. And look at these areas in green. So this is our Antarctic tundra, and up here is our Arctic tundra. Tundras are also found at the top of cold mountain ranges. Up on the top of mountain ranges, it's so high up that it becomes too cold and windy for any plants to grow. So there's no trees or bushes because it's way too cold and windy for those types of plants to survive. The tundra climate is most known for long, dark winters. Little precipitation falls there, so there's really not much rain or snow or sleet. There's very little precipitation. Temperatures can stay below freezing for up to 10 months of the year. That is almost the entire year, so 10 months out of the 12 months in a calendar year, it can be below freezing in these areas. So their winter is super long and it's almost winter for the entire year in these tundra biomes. Strong winds often make the temperatures feel even colder. Extra hours of sunlight come in the summer and sometimes the sun shines all day long. So much like how in the winter, sometimes it can be dark for the entire day, in the summer, it can be light for the entire day. And this sun being around all day, it warms up the tundra and helps melt the snow. Melted snow cannot drain through permafrost. So pools of water form on the land's surface. And then they refreeze when the cold weather returns. 
So if you look at this picture, you can see this little river, but there are a lot of little pools of water forming on the side in this Norwegian tundra. Only shrubs and other small plants grow in the tundra. They stay low to the ground and close together to avoid strong, cold winds. Plant, plant roots stay near the surface. They cannot grow through permafrost. So if you look over here on this side, you'll see dwarf birches and moss, and those are examples of the shrubs and small plants that grow in tundras. And you can see how low to the ground they are. So they don't grow tall like trees, they stay short so that way they can avoid the wind and they can stay together and be warm. And on this side, you'll see the Arctic willow and you'll notice its roots stay on the surface because of that ice layer we learned about before called permafrost. So their roots can't go into the ground and into the dirt like usual, so they stay towards the surface. Tundra plants live with little water and sunlight. Many of them can grow under the snow, just like the bear berries in this picture here. You see the snow and the plants are still blooming, even though there's snow on top of them. Plant leaves are small to limit water loss. And in the summer, flowering plants bloom quickly. So look how tiny these leaves are. And they're tiny, so that way they can hold on to all of the water that they collect. Because the bigger the leaves, the more water they need to feed those big leaves. So they keep it nice and tiny, so they don't need as much water and food. Tundra animals have ways to survive the winter. Some hibernate during extreme cold. And hibernating is, you know, for example, bears. Bears hibernate, which means they take a really long nap. They sleep from the fall to the spring, and they skip the entire winter. So they sleep through all of the cold. And that's how they have adapted to deal with the really cold winters. They just sleep right through it. Meanwhile, birds often migrate to warmer climates. So birds will fly south in the winter to find the warmth because they can't handle the cold. Many animals will also grow thick fur or gain fat for warmth. Some animals have white coloring to blend in with the snow, and this helps them hunt or hide. So on this top left over here, we have the Canada geese and snow geese flying south, looking for warmer weather. We have a polar bear here, and a snowshoe hare, and a snowy owl, and these animals are white, so that they can blend into the snow. So this is an adaptation that helps them hunt and also hide from other predators. Animals are active in the summer. They drink from the pools of melted snow and some animals eat the plants and insects that are living in these tundra climates. Other animals hunt and they eat a lot to store up fat for the long winter. And so here in our last section, we have the Baffin Coastal Tundra, which is located in Canada. And so this says, here, here is a picture of it on a map. Here it is really tiny up in the north. And here we have a closer zoomed in map. And this is the Baffin Coastal Tundra. It is about 3,500 square miles, and the temperature ranges from negative 9 degrees to 34 degrees. 
Looks like they have a lot of animals and also certain plants that we have learned about, like the Arctic fox, the Arctic hare, there are lemmings, and then moss and Arctic willow grow there. And that's it for our book. I hope you learned a lot about the tundra biome. And if you have any questions about words that you heard that maybe you weren't sure of the definition or I didn't have a chance to go over, take a look at the glossary over here and pause the video and you can read through the words and that should help you get a better picture. So I hope you had a great time. I learned a lot reading this book and I had a lot of fun. And I will see you all later. So have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.